Just when I thought we'd escaped during the first week of October, I noticed blight on another of the plot holders' tomato plants. My first thought was to protect my Christmas potatoes, which are still out on the plot. I needed to move them inside the greenhouse, but first I needed to make room. Another variety of tomato, which has done very well in the greenhouse there. This variety is called Sweet Million. Initially, I was intending to leave the Crimson Crush exposed to see it would withstand the blight. But time was moving on and so I decided to clear the bed. Shortly after I got indoors, I was thinking about the tasks I've got to do tomorrow, what order. And then I realised it was only about 15 minutes to sort this out, so I'd have been devastated if we'd had the blight come across tonight and wipe the potatoes out. So I just carried on, cleaned, tittled the beds over and brought the pots in. Continuing on with the tidying up of the beds, I decided to remove the sweet corn stalks and then this allowed me to set about harvesting the celery. Until the end of the first week in October, and the salary looks about right. Although we've had a really hot summer, I've had no problems with the salary because when I dug the trench out in here, I put a good help in the cow manure in, which has helped retain the moisture and keep the salary going. And also, I planted clouds together, which has helped with the self blanching. And that there, that's called Lytham self blanching. During the late spring, I'd also planted out a few spare crimson crushed tomatoes into the border of my back garden. These had gone completely unattended all through that long hot summer. I was really surprised really how well they'd grown. Not many ripe fruits, but plenty of green tomatoes, which by allowing them to ripen indoors would extend the period of having fresh ripe tomatoes. So I wasn't really complaining. I start this one bed, prepared it with a bit of top dressing, I found some nice rotted cow manure I'm just going to sprinkle on the top, lightly forking, and then we can get on with the planting of the garlic. When it came to planting out the elephant garlic cloves, I had a terrible shock to find that the supplies that I had had started to rot. Luckily, a quick call to Nick from Nick's allotment, and he soon had some fresh cloves heading my way. These are the cloves of garlic and uh, elephant garlic. I'll be planting them probably about nine inches, eight to nine inches apart. And when I do on all of mine, just check the base is clear. I always give the top a little snip, like that. And then I plant out, I'll go down about, so the ball's about two inches below the soil. Just pop it in, like that, cover it up. The long hot summer had left its mark with a huge infestation of whitefly. The brassicas seemed to take the most heat and none more so than the Brussels sprouts. In an order to thin out the lower leaves, I had to take some evasive action in the form of some temporary PPE. Towards the latter end of October, I'd, I decided to sow some overwinter onion sets that I'd purchased from Malvern Autumn Show. There was three varieties in all, and the plant is similar to the conventional garlic, and then when the bed was complete, I covered it with hooped in as a bit of protection to stop the birds pulling on the emerging green shoots. It appears with October that the nightly minimum temperatures caught us napping a few times, delivering some really cold nights, way below expected. We hovered just above zero on a few occasions, and towards the end of the month we saw three consecutive nights of minus two. The daily maximum temperatures in October were generally well above the average, 
except for a few days when we had heavy prolonged rain and then we saw significant dips. With the lowering of the temperatures, rain was more evident. During the middle of the month, we saw almost a week of continuous rain, the total for the month being 53 millimetres. The last few nights have seen us have a little bit of frost. That's brought both good news, but some bad. The good news was that the frost would sweeten the parsnips and also benefit the spreads. However, there was a downside, and that was the potatoes being grown for Christmas had been severely affected. The first harvest of parsnip was a little smaller than I'd expected, but I think this was due to the foliage getting damaged when I cleared the pea bed. Further harvests since have produced a slightly bigger crop. The Swedes still continue growing and they will be harvested only when I need them. November and December are good months to attend to housekeeping on the plot. For me, this involved cutting down the asparagus ferns to ground level and removing any weeds from the beds. It was also time to consider preparing the worm bins for winter. This includes giving them a top up of food and also insulating the bins against the sub-zero temperatures that we can expect during the coming months. Looking at the November daytime temperatures, in general it was a warm and pleasant month with just a blip of cooler temperatures around halfway and that coincided with some prolonged rain spells that we'd had. Finally, the rainfall for November was more prolific during the start and the end of the month. Again, another extended period of dry around the middle of the month, which came as a bonus to allow work to continue on the plot. One of the final jobs for November was one that I wasn't actually looking forward to, and that was digging up potatoes. I still have three beds full of potatoes, but the priority was to harvest my second early crop of charlottes. I had four rows to lift, but only managed two, saving the other two, I suppose, for the run-up to Christmas. The final planting for November was some golden gourmet shallots. These were planted in cell trays and left in the allotment greenhouse to fire up. Normally, I plant shallots direct into the beds during the early spring, can also be planted directly outdoors during autumn, but I chose to leave them in the greenhouse since the soil temperature had started to drop. Well into December now, I'm just digging the last row of charlottes up. As you can see, that's a fairly decent crop off there. They're really in good condition as well, which has surprised me. So I'm, I think I've just got one root left here now. So, whoa. I'll just put them on there and show you what we can get enough one root. Well, that's about it, I think. It's, uh, that's the Charlotte's for this year. And so for one root, I think that's a good uh, crop. So next year I'll be growing these in buckets, so it'll be interesting just to see if the crop as well. We were approaching midway through December, and one of the final jobs on the plot for 2018 was to protect the two beds of Sao Palmeira against any adverse weather that we may see in the near future. First I removed the barrier fencing and then removed the remains of the sunflowers. Unlike last year, surprisingly, the sunflower roots are fairly easy to get out. The 
final task was to cover the beds and to stop the soil getting too wet from any rain or snow. Looking at the weather maps for December, before we look at the individual ones, just a quick word to say that the, the dotted vertical lines on all three December weather maps indicate the point where this video was made. So the readings to the left of the line are actual measurements and the readings to the right are predicted figures obtained from the Met Office forecast for my local area. December is always an unpredictable month whereby we hardly saw any near normal temperatures. Surprisingly though, quite a few nights remained warm. We had the odd night where they saw zero or sub-zero temperatures. Again, daytime temperatures were surprisingly warm, but as the trend of the graph shows, it is gradually dipping to what could be a cold winter. Rainfall for December was more prevalent but towards the middle of the month, we witnessed a few cold but dry days. The total rainfall predicted for December is 61 millimetres. Well, with them three beds done, that's about it for the allotment now. There's only the Brussels spreads really left and parsnips, and they'll come out as and when we use them. So uh, that's it for the allotment for this year. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all the subscribers, the viewers, people who leave comments. All your support is much appreciated. I hope to see you all again in 2019. So from me, Nigel at Muddy Boots, wish you all Happy Christmas and a prosperous New Year. And see ya, 2019.